Uh, good morning, and uh, thanks for your time and attention. Uh, my name is Brian Patempa, and I'm the president of Amazing Love. And today, as Pastor mentioned, this is Vision Sunday. So we wanted to talk a little bit about what our vision is of, of the church and share a little bit about what we've done over the past year. Can you believe it's been a year already since we've last done this? And there has been a lot of work that has been accomplished in just the one year. We'll get to that shortly. We'll get to the vision in a minute. But as I started doing some research, I came across this message that really just hit home with me. Plant the good seeds of righteousness, and you will harvest a crop of love. And what you see in the picture is, of course, the, the fruits of a seed, a plant growing. And what does a plant produce? More seeds, more fruit, which is the whole point of our vision. What we had set up last year, a year ago, was a vision that was very tactical. We wanted to make something happen right away. So we had a very short-term vision. This year, we're going to go beyond that. And so the vision that we want to talk about now is how do we propel ourselves into the future and think longer term. Before we get there, though, uh, Pastor mentioned this, this quote up here, a vision without a plan is just a wish. And it's so true, isn't it? If we don't have a plan, we're just wishing on shooting stars. Well, we're going to put a plan together. We did put a plan together last year. We're going to put another plan together to propel us into the future, and we're going to reach for the stars. We're not going to be wishing on those shooting stars. So our plan last year, a very tactical plan that was executed, was based on three key pillars. First of all, witnessing. And if you remember my message last year, I, I know I threw a lot at you last year, a lot of statistics out there. If you remember, I had a slide up there with a map and we had a, a bunch of pin drops to show where our membership is. And we were all over multiple states. And there was a statistic I shared with you that less than half of our current membership are not even from Frankfurt. In fact, it's closer to a third. And so my point was, we need to be relevant in our own backyard. And so we'll talk a little bit about what we did to deliver on that. Uh, secondly, structure. Uh, this is a church that is for the people, but more importantly, by the people. A church is not just a physical building. It's made up of us, and what we do with that defines our church and defines on the energy that, and the effort that we put in, that ultimately the success is up to God. He just asks us to put the energy forth. And finally, we, our, our final pillar was on discipleship and making sure that the flock of all of us, we're a family, and we're prepared to go out there and to go forth and make disciples. So as I mentioned, we're going to turn our focus this year on longer-term thinking, long-term success. But we need your help. Last year, we had a lot of internal thinking from the leadership team on how we would deliver on our short-term plan, but now we're thinking longer-term. What do you want your church to be? So after our message here this morning, we're going to have a picnic. We're going to have lots of time to catch up with you. I'll just ask for a couple of minutes of your time, uh, either right after church or out there while we're, we're eating and, and uh, having some fun. Uh, please, share some thoughts. This is your church. So I wanted to spend some time just celebrating the accomplishments of last year. On the witnessing topic, social media team. For the first time ever, we created a social media team that just really knocked this one out of the park with the help of folks like Greg and, and Jordan and Cheryl and Tracy. And I know I'm missing some folks. Ryan, you guys did an amazing job about making our church relevant outside of these four walls. We have a Facebook. We have apps. People are following us, liking us, messaging us. We're actually getting people in the doors of our church from that effort. Very few folks getting tremendous results, which is a little bit of effort. Uh, music in the Park. This is new. This is in our own backyard. We're sponsoring. Amazing Love gets our, our brand out there in our own community. Pastor and I are thinking about uh, actually showing up at one of these events where, that we are advertising, and we actually get to speak and, aver and, and actually sell our church. Uh, so a good opportunity for us to get in front of the community as well and put a face with our name. Uh, we we uh, spun off our first ever President's Corner, which is, again, utilizing our online, our social media aspect. Because one of the things that you told us last year was we want to know more about what's happening. We need better communication, so we did this. So let us know, is this working for you? Is it relevant? Are you utilizing it? Uh, polling center, 
Uh, we did this last year for the first time ever as well. Uh, our polling center where folks go to vote uh, was actually next door at the library or at a school down the street. And look at these numbers, hundreds of people through our doors that otherwise would not ever have gone through our doors, came through our doors. And I put three quotes that I heard from folks as, they, as I had a chance to catch up with them that just knocked my socks off. The first one, I didn't even know a church was here. They were going right next door to vote at the library. Didn't even know a church was here. Walking through the door and saying, this is a church? Where's the sanctuary? This doesn't really feel like a church. And it was a great opportunity for us to tell them, yeah, we're a little different. We do things a little different here. It's a non-traditional perspective. And then finally, thank you. Thanks for taking the opportunity to bring polling here and keep our children safe and put the school back into schools because they didn't want strangers walking through their schools to vote. So a big benefit to the community, delivering on local relevance in our own backyard. Uh, we did the, our David Ramsey webcast for the first time ever. For those of you that don't know, David Ramsey's a, a Christian financial planner. You know, life's uh, outside of church and the one hour we put in on Sundays, and, and this is delivering on that, uh, making ourselves more financially responsible and aware of how to handle the resources that God uh, provides to us. And uh, Pastor talked about the outdoor movie night and the great success that was. Uh, we also, so besides just the new things, we enhanced some initiatives that we've already had in place. Uh, Christine Siever did a fantastic job putting the building blocks together for soccer camp. Uh, Tracy took that over this year. We've just ex exceeded expectations, even our own internal expectations. Had capped soccer camp with 100 folks, and that was already filled, paid for before day one. We added an extra 10 folks for a waiting list, and Tracy, correct me if I'm wrong, there's eight people still waiting to get into soccer camp that happened a couple weeks ago. Tremendous demand from our own community, and they're already asking about what's next, what else are you doing this summer beyond soccer camp? And you need to do more. We wanna keep coming back. And when's next year's too? So great success there. <clears throat> uh, I hear numerous stories that you, you guys have shared with me in the halls about simple things about how you've just extended the invite from uh, a lunch with a stranger, a neighbor down the street. Uh, Pastor, don't, you, you already hit this one out of the park uh, earlier about the simple results of an invite and getting folks in, in the doors. And, and I want to make sure I'm clear that this is not about filling seats in here, but making an impact for the next life as well. Uh, the free garage sale has been another great success. Uh, Pastor also commented on the great things that are happening around our, our own property. And, uh, and, and a big thanks to Tabitha with what she's doing with our signing. Uh, so the second big pillar was about making sure we had proper structure. And so we've leveled out uh, more of the responsibility, sharing the responsibility, sharing the workload amongst all of us, rolling up our own sleeves. This is not just a church centered on one man of pastor, but yet we are all lending hands in, 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 the, in the mission. You'll see that I've colored a couple of boxes here yellow. We still have a hole. We have three of four paid positions that actually had turned over, and we have still a gap. Uh, music director, if, if any of you have uh, names or suggestions on either recruiting or filling, please uh, reach out to myself or, or Pastor, one of the other members of the leadership team. This is a critical uh, area, a critical role for us to fill. Two other I've, I've colored here in, in yellow, you'll see uh, outreach and teen ministry. Right now, these are gaps in our church. You know, we, we're a church that wants to share Jesus with, with all people all the time, and I think we're doing a fantastic job with children's ministry director. What Ann has, has taken that, simplified that, has done a great job. We already know adult ministry is great with the works of all of that, that you do, including uh, Pastor himself. But, uh, you know, the teens, that's a huge gap for us, and I'm speaking from experience. I, there was a dark period of my life in the teen ministry, and I didn't have help. And if, if this in, excites or jazzes some of you to to step up and help the church. If you think there are ideas on how you can help keep our teens strong spiritually in very challenging times in their life when they may be away from home, uh, we'd love to have that, that role filled. And outreach, there's a lot of genius in this room. I've heard a lot of folks share some great ideas and uh, I think it's, it's both external as well as internal. Would love to put some, some uh, resources towards someone that would like to take that on. Uh, the last pillar was on discipleship, and I think this is an area that we do uh, fairly well. I mean, Aaron has done a great job with building a community of, of, of women that are, are such a strong family, 
And we saw this as a gap with our males, and a couple of folks have stepped up and said, let's, let's build a community of strong male uh, relationships as well through Bible study, and, and Dan's done a great job with apologetics and, uh, and building a stronger men's group. So this was supposed to be a fireworks slide with a lot of names coming up, but my PowerPoint skills are not that good. The point here is many, many thanks to all the tremendous people that have lended a hand, and I couldn't fit all the names up here, but you'll notice a lot of your names are up here. Many of your names are up here. And the point is, you've heard of the 80-20 rule. Churches fail when you cross the 80-20 rule, when 20% of the church is doing 80% of the work. This is a lot of your names. You're driving this church success, so thank you. And ideas are flowing. More ideas are coming constantly. We're looking for support and resources to help take some of these uh, ideas all the way through fruition. Uh, we talked about the teen gap. Uh, you'll see a picture of, of Athleta. I know my daughter pronounces that Athleta. I've forgiven her for it. It's really Athleta. At least I believe so, but we'll debate that another day. Uh, branding ourselves, amazing love. Uh, you see schools out there like UNC or for my cousin in California, USC, it's, it's hard to walk down the street and not see somebody wearing something about a school that they're proud to have gone or even wish they have gone to with shirts and hats about UNC. What about amazing love? And, and what about if we could add some passages on there that make you proud and could spur a conversation with a complete stranger to get to that eventual stage of extending the invite? I think that's an opportunity, a great idea from... Uh, from you guys out there, uh, camp night. Uh, I don't, this is another great idea. Uh, what, what if we did a, a camp night, set up some tents out in the back, and as a family came together, just like we did with the movie night, and made a campfire and shared Bible stories or asked pastor to lead a, a conversation, spiritual conversation, and wake up the next morning at food trucks or kickball tournaments and just really bond as a family. Uh, care packages, that was my idea this funny picture of a box with a heart in it was care packages going back to the teen topic you know when folks are really challenged at a point in life what if we gave them something that strengthened themselves and, and gave them outlets and avenues and ideas on how to stay strong spiritually in a really tough period of your life if any of these ideas are exciting you just let's have the conversation I, we, we think these are great areas of opportunities and great ideas that spurred uh, from most of yourselves my key point here is that, look at these numbers. It took 25 people to run soccer camp this year. It takes an average of 23 to run church on a weekly basis. The average initiative in Amazing Love uses 10 folks, 10 volunteers. Uh, this is where if we want to be a church that propels us uh, past where we are today, uh, it takes resources. Uh, so this is an eye chart. I don't want you to read all the information. We've vetted our budget. We are not a church focused on numbers. And I really mean that. And I got to say, God has so richly blessed us financially. We're a quarter of a million dollar church now, $275,000 budget. And we're very transparent about it. We're not hiding anything. We've got resources. If you've got questions, we can tell you where all the money's going. It should be going to areas that you believe are important that are building your church. The key point I want to highlight here is what I've highlighted here in green. If there is passion and bandwidth, we will fund it. So don't let the financials prevent you from delivering on something you feel called to God to do. Okay, one more point here, and that's the vision. I'm coming back to the point I made about long-term vision. I was talking to a good friend of mine that spurred a thought in my mind about this thing that I called faith development continuum of a Christian. And there's a point where we've all come to faith in Christ, right? That's the starting point of the arrow. And that's when you first get introduced to God. And, what, and that could be at different stages of your life. It could be baptism. It could be as an adult. Between there and this middle time of your spiritual evolution, you start to nurture and build your faith. God calls you to faith. He plants the seed. It's really up to us with his help to continue to build our faith. But this is where I think a lot of churches fail, is that people check the box on Sundays. And the, the wisdom that was shared with me is there's a difference between a convert and a disciple. A convert comes to faith, and they follow the rules. A disciple follows Jesus. I wrote this down because this is important. There's two other things I want to share with you. 
a convert goes to church, disciples are the church. And finally, and this was the most powerful one, converts talk about church. But disciples, they go and make other disciples. They build the church. And this is where I think if we are using our faith, if we're extending the invite, if we're not afraid, if we've got what pastor likes to call spiritual swagger, and we are out there and we are testifying and we are witnessing, I think that we would all be very, very proud of this church and where this church can go. So thanks for your time. I'd love to talk to you guys afterwards and, and hear what you guys think about where we need to go to build your church. Look forward to enjoying the picnic with all of you.